it was better for my mental health than any therapist session has ever been. I'm in a situation after this program where I take almost no medication for my mental illness. I got con control over my body, over when I wanted to do exercise, when I wanted to eat, and also what I somehow, in a way, what I wanted to think. And I did not think that that was in any way possible. And I was taught that I was sick. I was taught that I was wrong. Today we had Karen here and I wanted to take Karen on this interview because her story is actually very inspirational to me personally as a coach. Uh, and I'm not saying this just because Karen is here with us, but because it has been a, a journey for me as well as a coach. I developed as a coach during this relationship and I learned so much about myself, about the world, about society and about Karen and her family as well throughout the whole program, the time we worked together. So what I wanted to do was taking Karen example to the attention of everybody, because this showed me how important it is to invest in ourselves, to really take coaching and self-development to a higher level, even when we feel it might not be for us, even when it's packaged as we need to take care of our body with fitness and all that and nutrition, which is also the reason why Karen contact me at the very beginning and I'll let her uh, explain you how but this is a little bit what we want to give you and what we hope you get out of this conversation so let's get started and first of all I want to say thank you you being open to be here and sharing your experience with us I know for a fact this is going to help a lot of people out there that might be on the fence about investing in themselves through coaching, whether it's this coaching program or other people's coaching programs, how important it is to invest in ourselves. It's something that we're not really sure if it's worth the money, if it's the thing for us, if it makes sense uh, and how mm -hmm. to choose the right coach for us, how to choose the right program for us. What should we focus on? Just give us a little bit of introduction. Who are you? Fun facts. And also just what made you at the very, very beginning, what made you decide to join the program? Yeah, well, uh, first off, uh, I'm, my name is Karen. I'm 32. I'm, I'm married to uh, my wife for five years. We've been together for nine years. Um, we've just had our second kid. Uh, we have a daughter who's four years old. And, uh, and uh, our newest, youngest daughter is five months. I first decided to join when I was kind of stuck. I was moving forward in a lot of ways in my life. I'm I'm a writer and I was sort of uh, starting to publish books and moving forward with that. But I was kind of stuck in a way of thinking about food. And it happened about the time when I I... I was diagnosed with mental illness when I was a kid and I've been like struggling with that for all of my life really. Um, and some of the medication that I took made me gain a lot of weight. That was quite a struggle for me to lose that weight again. And I, I had lost about 20 kilos, I think. And I was uh, struggling with losing the last uh, 10. Um, but most of all, I just really, really wanted to get a new relationship with food. Like I could tell this is not a healthy relationship. Like I was using food as a way of coping with everything. And it was very much controlling me, really. It felt like even though I felt like I was using it to cope, it also felt like I didn't have control of it. It felt like it was controlling me and it was all I could think about. And it made me sad because in in periods where I was like struggling with something, I would really gain a lot of weight and then I would lose them again and I would gain them again. And I felt like it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't going to last. And I wanted to find some way to, to have this other more healthy relationship with my body also with, with food and with my body. Cause I, um, I really wanted to exercise, but I had like a lot of struggles with, I've had a lot of struggles with anxiety and it felt a lot like I was like I was having an anxiety attack if I was like biking or running or like if I in any way had my pulse up, it would like trigger that emotion of being scared. Um, and so I, I quickly realized I need someone to help me find some way to have a healthier relationship with food and with my body and with exercise. 
and I was I was talking to my wife and said I don't know if if this person exists like I don't know if there's anyone who could like teach me how to exercise but also have that sort of mental picture there too and I was very like skeptic at first I was like that's that sounds like boohoo I mean that doesn't really sound like a real thing that's not but I was like, okay, I was desperate. So I was like, let's let's give it a try. And I think we talked, the first time we talked, you and I, we talked for like an hour. And I was like, okay, I'm buying this. This is this makes sense. Because there was this concern and focus on both things, on both the physical and the mental. And that was exactly what I needed. I needed someone who could embrace all of me and even when I was like, could you give me a meal plan or could you like tell me how to uh, exercise or could you tell me? And you were like, well, I could do that, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> and that really like changed the way that I thought of this and, and, and realized, of course, I should to make it like su sustainable, to make it something that lasts all of my life. I should definitely get to a place where it's natural for me to eat more naturally and that's not gonna come from from you telling me what to eat that's gonna come from me making some choices because of what we've talked about and really that's what surprised me is that we've done nothing but talk on the phone and on video and like I was like that's how is that even possible to make changes like that but I could see changes in my body and I could see changes so so much in my mindset and I think again your let's call it journey for better uh, lack of better terms here but when we first met we had as like a, a certain focus of course on body health as well because again how I work and how this coaching program works is a holistic approach so of course we're looking at how the body can sustain our spiritual and mental game and vice versa right how the mental uh our overthinking or our mental patterns or our behavior mental behavior or uh, the story we tell ourselves about who we are and our beliefs influence how we act daily how we make those decisions that shape th the body and the choices that we make when it comes to our also just nutrition, sleep, working out or moving. So that is why every person is different. And while there is some principles that I always teach and I incorporate in each and everybody's plan or roadmap on this, it's important to me that I just get to listen to the per person and then give them the space to just be and feel wholly seen, loved and supported in, in this journey. And yes, it the most of it comes out of having a strategy and we talked together, we had really reconnect to me being able to be a whole, to be able to navigate all these different parts of myself and these different areas of my life with one mindset, with one mind, my own thoughts, my own being. That's why we, we work on, yes, there is strategies, there is systems, there is habits that we incorporated, there is tips and tricks and hacks about nutrition, eat this instead of that, let's try to switch that with this this movement pattern okay let's go for walks daily or let's do this kind of workout you are given those tools but also the understanding that why are we choosing those because of your personal story and also how that develops into an identity and a lifestyle so we have mm. habits we have choices and we're building an identity right we're building mm. with an holistic approach in mind how much this helps it's you're the proof of that so these were the problems that you had before joining. And of course, I always quote unquote screen people because I we're a very tight community and I, I don't work with people that are not, that I cannot help. So if I can help you, I will let you know, I will do anything I can to bring you in, give you a spot in the coaching program. One question that people out there may be thinking, well, I want to invest in myself. I want to make a change. Maybe it's my body. Maybe it's my mental health. Maybe it's the relationship with food or the relationship with movement, whatever their thing is that they're struggling with. How did you choose me as a person? You said your wife knew me and saw my mm. content. So you had an idea that this person might resonate with me. But mm. what made you choose me instead of going to a lot of different other experts or therapists or people? What stand out and um, why do you think this was 
what helped you the most? The biggest thing was that there was both the physical and the mental sort of melts together in the approach that you use. And that was really what I needed because I've been in therapy all of my life in the psychiatric system. And when I've been, when they've been like, oh, well, you're gaining weight, we could uh, give you a nutritionist. And I've been like, well, that's not what I need because I don't, I know what I'm supposed to eat. I just don't do it. So I need somebody to let like help me with that and um and and so i i knew somehow i needed someone who was able to do both i've been to the gym i've had some some former firefighter tell me what weights to lift didn't help i mean i, I needed someone to 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 like see both things and see both things as equally important and like help me with the fact that this was like intertwined, it's all mixed together in this big confusion and past traumas and all of these things. I guess after this first conversation with you, I realized that that was exactly the way that you were working and that the way that this program could help me would was also if I like opened up and was honest and told you this is everything that's going on and you would like quickly try to find your way in that. And we both agreed on what we needed to do. It was like we understood each other. And I had this like really idea of I need to make results that are visible. I need to like start now and I need to like get an A in everything before I start doing it. And so I just, I just, I started like even when we had like our first conversation our second or third conversation I was like I signed up for this course like I'm, and you were like that's quick <laughs> and I was like well yeah because I'm like I'm whoa it's everything and I'm, I'm so I, I wanted like really to to do something that was visible and to like make myself happy make you feel like this is you're the best uh, coaching person I've ever had like I, I want I want to be the best at everything and you were like maybe we should work on that maybe we shouldn't overachieve everything and everything and so it was like quickly you got what was behind all of the things that I was doing and that was exactly what I needed and you were very very good at not telling me that it was wrong which is what I felt like has been happening a lot in the psychiatric system there's been a lot of pointing at me and saying this is what's wrong with you and very quickly I realized that your way of working was saying this is what's right about you this is the things that you're good at and that made the whole difference I didn't know the lengths that we would like go to I didn't know how far we were gonna get I had no idea that we were gonna achieve all the things that we have but somehow it just it just resonated with me that you were like if you're honest if you put your heart your life your feelings into my hands I'm gonna take good care of you and it just I just I believed that like instantly there was like this connection and I was like this is this might actually be something big so I guess that it takes that little sort of step to to like put your life into somebody else's hands like that but I guess it's really paid off in like a tremendous ways but also I guess that first real little step is is about like just being completely honest. And I was like, I have nothing to lose. There's this guy on the other end of the phone and he's probably heard just about everything. So I'm just gonna like spill it and he can tell me if that's something he wants to work on. <laughs> it wasn't like just the guy who was telling me what to lift to, to have like uh, nice muscles or not just the guy telling me what to eat. It was like everything all combined. And it was like more, more therapeutic. I don't know how to say this, but maybe just it was better for my mental health than any therapist's session has ever been. And that really surprised me. And I had no idea going in on our second call. I had this big realization about how all my life I'd been told that my energy was like a, a limited resource and I needed to like take care of it and like I didn't have that much of it and you were like well you can make your own energy like you can it doesn't have to be the story and that really surprised me that we were going that deep already in like our second conversation going that yeah. deep in and, and saying like this is the story that you've been telling about yourself 
and it's not necessarily true. And that just like blew my mind. And and it opened up all of the energy that that was somehow there. Yeah, I still remember that conversation very clearly. And it, yeah. it was very impactful also for me because I, I had no idea what we need to work with when I just have a first conversation with people. I might know, you know, you told me I want to lose weight and I want to do it sustainably. So I need some nutrition guidance. I need some um, some movement, ex- like some exercise, something like that. But I also have all these barriers or this beliefs about myself or about movement or these triggers within me when it comes to food when it comes to movement and this is why the, my first approach with people is having that first conversation which is not like only a sales call because I need to understand is this a person that I can help do I want to spend time with this person because it is it is not a lot of time we spend together meaning we have a conversation a week so it's an hour a week or an hour every second week, or an hour every third week. But then we put system into place so that you can go do the work and you always have me to reach back and follow through with things. Mm -hmm. But I never know where is this going to take us, which is what I think scares most people because you're not paying a lot of money for something that you get in your hand. You're not going to pay, you know, 3K, 5K, and then you get your iPhone or your MacBook Mm -hmm. and you go out and you use it. You have no idea. You're betting on yourself. You're betting on the relationship. And I think that scares a lot of people out there. This is also what, though, sometimes having invested myself in coaching and personal development and all these kind of uh, important things, I know how scary it is to literally invest hard-earned money, maybe our savings, maybe needing to borrow money. I did that to invest in myself. But I also know Mm -hmm. that the second I have done it, the second I made that decision, now I'm going to invest this insane amount of money on myself. And I think as an LGBT person, we're also very often not feeling safe in just investing in ourselves because our self-worth or self-belief or self-trust is might be very low. We know Russian, it's right, but it's tough for us to do it. it, it there is some resistance to it. Mm. Just having done that step, just having said, I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to put all this money and bet on this and I'm going to do the work and I'm going to open up. Just doing that is a, it's a pivotal moment. It changes a lot of things because you're you're really taking care of yourself in such a deep level because now you have skin in the game. Now you're there to do it and you're doing it right and you're guided. But I didn't know what would happen either. And this is what also really blew my mind that we were able because you were willing to go deep and you're open and honest and transparent and I'm the same I shared my own personal story with my own struggles in the psychiatric system my story as being as an LGBTQ person we had some commonalities and this is why I connect best and I can help best people that are proud of everything they achieved but also are a little bit of an overachiever and they want to get to that next level they have an LGBTQ identity within them. They might have some diagnosis on their back. And I think I can relate to those people because I've been there because I'm still here. And that kind of creates that connection, relationship with yourself, but also your your, your actual body that brought new stories that you were telling yourself. So what we've been doing mm-hmm. is really going back to the stories that the psychiatric system or society has told you about yourself. And that you believe because that's the what we do. We believe it's the stories we're told. And then we grow, we need to grow out of those. And it is scary and it is intense because we feel somehow that's familiar. We're connected to them. So going to the extra step and kind of getting, let's say getting naked, doing the inner work before mm. we see a result, it is quite scary. Tell us a little bit, like as a result of this work that we've been doing together, what have been the biggest changes in either your physical results, your relationships, your life in general, how has this coaching program and doing this work here with us has been helping you? Well, that's the crazy part is I thought that I was gonna like uh, lose a lot of weight and get ripped and be like uh, this super cool new version of myself. But already when starting out, I was scared that if I just do that, how, how do I know that I don't feel like crap on the inside still and so I guess what really surprised me is that now I'm in a situation after this program where I take almost no 
medication for my mental illness. I take like smaller dose than the smallest dose. So I like cut my pills in half at night because there is no dose as small as the one that I need now. And how many and, years have you been in the psychiatric system and how many years of therapy have you done before having worked with me for a few months? Since I was nine years old and I'm 32, 32 now. now. Yeah. That to me is incredible. That I could not even expect of myself. And again, it's not me, it's us. I think there is, mm. of, of course, power. Like now for everybody watching or listening, this is not like I have superpowers yeah. or I'm not a therapist. Yeah. Um, literally like this is out of, this is why I weighed the relationship with the client this much. And this is why it is one-on-one. -on -one. It is, it is personalized work. And this is why mm. it's expensive because mm. we're creating results that are life-changing, but it's a relationship and it's built on your personal needs and yeah. not every workout, not every nutrition guideline, not every coaching, not every deep dive into your own inner self is the same for everybody but just hearing that to me is i'm still mind blown <laughs> that you know yeah from the age of nine being in the psychiatric system having tried and seen so many different therapists psychologists psychiatrists i don't know and then having taken medication and then out of this work for a few months working on mindset reframing things i am so astonished of how much you could accomplish especially when we see not only the physical result, but also the fact that we literally have less than the amount of medicine that you take because we got to a different, like that is mind blowing, especially mm. for someone like me that also had the diagnosis posted on and I stopped my meds. But again, I'm not claiming that, oh, I'm going to help you stop your meds for anxiety, depression, uh, schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Like I'm not claiming that. But the fact that you're not the first one that lower mm. their dosage of medicine or stop going to therapy or stopped taking meds because of the renewed mm. it literally is like a relationship with yourself yeah um it that is. is extremely extremely interesting so mm. that was a very big result of yeah going to almost no meds number two i think is very much like the reason why i could go down go that go with that much less medicine is that I was able to like completely erase the voice like literal voice in my head like my own voice but it was there telling me everything I did that it was stupid that it was wrong that I was not worth anything it was like really like so intense living with this like constant thing in my head like it was like it's it was it was it was something that I was told was a part of my diagnosis that I had like these um, this like uh, div division of myself like there was this part of me that was me and, like and doing things yeah so I had like this per this person that was me sitting over here telling me that everything I did was crap really and that I was like everything I did it was like are you sure you want to do that. I like when you do that with your hand, you look stupid. Why are you doing that? Stop doing that. It was like constantly telling me how I was doing things wrong. So I was unable to like say, hey, let's go get a coffee. I want to get a coffee because this voice was like, don't get a coffee. Why do you want to get a coffee? That's stupid. Don't do that. So I was like, it was so hard for me to make a decision, to stick with an opinion, to like be in a regular relationship with myself and with other people because I was constantly thinking I was lesser than them and whatever I thought it was not as important so I would always bow down if someone was like ah oh, maybe I want to go get ice cream instead of be like oh we'll, we'll do that we'll do that because I didn't want to impose I didn't want to like steal the air or whatever because there was the, always this sort of version of myself telling me that I was not worth it and that whatever I wanted it was stupid and I had this other voice over here that was like constantly talking to me about how sort of this was a weird constellation of things, like being very like uh, analytical all the time. What happened at some point during our work, those two, they shut up. They are not there anymore. They are literally not there. And that I have worked on my entire life. 
I didn't even know that was why I wanted to kill myself when I was 10, but that's exactly why I wanted that. And I didn't even know that that had affected every part of the person that I became. But all of a sudden it was like these layers and, and, and came off and I like, I am burst out of this shell. All of a sudden I was able to trust myself and trust the opinions, trust my thoughts. Cause there wasn't like these people versions of myself in my head telling me that I was not worth it, that I, that everything I thought was stupid that everything I wanted was stupid. And all of a sudden I just, I could trust myself and I could even start liking myself and I got so much calmer and I got so much like energy because all of this just disappeared and I was actually able to just be in a situation to just be in the world to just be in a room and that was like life-changing it just happened as a way of us working on how I saw myself, working on this criticism, working on this way of, of the stories that's been t that I've been telling about myself or the way that I keep saying, where we talked about it once actually, where we said that, where you said that there was like a, a change in the fact that for, for some time I would be like, I'm thinking this or I'm doing this or this is happening to me this equals I am not good enough or I am not worth spending time on or I am this kind of person who doesn't succeed. So we worked on that and that sort of disappeared. That way of, we, we sort of managed to make that into a, another way of thinking and thinking like maybe I could be that person who makes things happen or maybe I could take control and that's the big thing that really changed for for me is is that you kept saying let's try to control this let's take control over the situation over the thoughts over whatever is happening let's not let it happen to you but let's take control of it and that makes make the whole difference like I I got con control over my body over when I wanted to do exercise, when I wanted to eat, and also what I somehow, in a way, what I wanted to think. And I did not think that that was in any way possible. And I was taught that I was sick. I was taught that I was wrong. And somehow by you telling me, you're right, you, you got this. I'd be like, oh, maybe I do. And you're saying, use these tools to gain control of what's happening in your life, of what you're thinking, of what you're doing. And I was like, oh, okay and then all of these like symptoms disappeared without us even talking about those and that was like the biggest thing really and that leads me to number three which is that i'm actually now able to stand in in a shop in a bookstore uh, twice a week and have like a regular job and i was never able to do that never and that would never have happened without us doing this work so I, I cannot explain in how many ways my life has like opened up since we've done this work. What I love about hearing this is really going back to, you know, we use fitness, we use nutrition, we use all the coaching that we do to go. Those are the tools that build that self-trust because what you're explaining to us there was that inner voice that was like chattering all the time and that split that you were told that's just part of the, your diagnosis I'm sorry that's it we kind of challenged the beliefs we kind of went a little bit you know what what if they're wrong and we're not saying they're wrong meaning you shouldn't validate your past or validate your story or we're like no you don't have a diagnosis and we're against the psychiatric system we're not saying that but we're like what if there is another truth that can come up whether there's, there's another side of things that might serve us best and that was a story that helped us in the past but now we gotta reframe it differently setting up systems with fitness even with nutrition as well changing even the body appearance was limiting down getting stronger all these things are just tools that are gonna of course there is the bonus that you feel better you look in the mirror you're proud of yourself you look better in clothes you feel more confident in your body which is something that people come to me for and it's something that i've been working myself on and we've been working on that that went great we know that works but that is just a part of the the whole system that we're trying to create and coach you through to build a self-trust 
to really like find the added meaning that is different. And it only comes out of doing consistent work and having support and accountability in sticking to this week we do this, this week we do that, time management, the small things that then if we zoom out, we're taking action every week on very small things that are doable. You're seeing successes every week. You're seeing that you might the weight goes down or it feels stronger or you actually achieve what you told yourself you would want to achieve. And that builds the self-trust. And then we kind of coach you through if something comes up, if there is a resistance, we go to grab that, look at that, bring it to the light and not even solve the issue. We dissolve the problem because we try to see instead of seeing this as a problem or this has been an issue forever, what if we just dissolve it by letting go of things instead of trying to add more stuff to it? We just need to remove, 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 remove all these layers, reconnecting to yourself, to your own setting boundaries with other people, setting boundaries with yourself. And that way we stop the people pleasing. We feel more authentic. We feel like we have a voice. We feel in control. And all of these things are not only things that are put on us with the psychiatric diagnosis sometimes, but also as LGBTQ people is something that we've been taught or we're still being told. Seeing lesser meds down to almost no meds, getting rid of that inner self-talk that was constant and, and very disturbing that robbed you of actually all the energy you had and all the feeling present and calm. And on top of that, also being able now to have a job because of all this, that's amazing. That's a big top three. And again, we're not saying that there is not going to go ups and downs and life is now all rain rainbows and roses at all, but we'll build someone uh, or you found a part of you that can withstand anything. And, mm -hmm. and now you also understood how important it is to invest in yourself to do this kind of work. And you have a community that is still here for you because we're still here for you 100%. If there was anybody out there that listened to this conversation, that saw this, mm. this change in it and all that, and is like on the fence, not knowing, oh, but this is expensive. I don't have the money or this is not worth it. Maybe this is not for me. I think she might be one out of a thousand and maybe this doesn't work for me. Or why should I even talk to Nevin? What would you tell them? I want to say I felt that way too. I didn't believe in it. I didn't think that that coaching was for me. I've always been told that I had bigger problems. I've always thought that it was somehow for people who were more successful in life uh, in many ways and that it was uh, that my problems would go deeper. And so I, I figured that's not it's not going to do anything for me. But I figured why not try it? And so I'd had that first call and I really went from not thinking that it was for me at all to thinking, okay, I'm just going to give it whatever and see what happens to like believing this is what changed my life. And this is what I'm going to continue to use this for the rest of my life. And even though I have like this, I used this amount of money, I spent this amount of money on it. You cannot put a price on changing your life, on changing your mindset. It's not even just about losing weight. It's not even just about feeling better about yourself it's like the whole package of just like regaining that trust in myself that I cannot put a price on and that first call that was what really made me realize this could this could work for me and and that was free it, it took an hour and I'm like okay I'm really happy that I did that for myself that I was like okay I can I can I can give them in an hour I can do that and so my life just went from there you know so so if I sh if I can say anything it's like invest that hour in yourself and see what happens because it yeah. is stuff, you stuff not, happens you might be the right person <laughs> you might not be the right person and that's something that yeah. we for sure are going to figure out together and again I think your testimony here and and again your story and why the reason why I wanted you to share it with others is exactly because you didn't believe this was gonna work also one of those people that came with the body and the nutrition and the fitness and then yes we did that because we lost the weight you bought some cool clothes we posted some pictures in our Facebook group of like smashing it in some new clothes and like feeling stronger and sticking to to your nutrition and 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 your movement and all those things but at the same time Jesus like top three results are mind-blowing 
on top of just the, the body thing of you looking in the mirror and say, oh, I actually lost weight and I can maintain it. I've been maintaining it for a while. I can, I know how to do it, what to do. And I feel confident. It's just a natural state of being for you now. And that is just amazing. So thank you so, so much for taking the time to share these things with us. I'm going to, of course, as Karen is a writer and has having a great success here in Denmark, going on tour and doing all amazing things with our book. I'm going to post the links for the books in the description down below. So if you're Danish and you want to read these books, you can go grab them there. If you're interested in booking a call with me or want to join our community or even getting some free resources, the links are going to be in the description below. Thank you so much, Karen, for today. We wish you all the best and it has been a true honor, a true pleasure. And I really, really, I'm so thankful that, you know, we got the chance to do this. Thank you so much. Thank you.